G'day folks. Do you have a leaking electrical wiring harness connector as it protrudes through the case of your GM transmission? Well, the culprit is this 10 cent O-ring, most likely. That goes around the connector, I'll show you. It could also be this very tiny part as well, but I'm gonna show you what you need to do Here's the transmission and there's the back of the vehicle and the front is up this way. This is a 4L60E, but I think the 4L80 is the same. And what you have is a wiring harness that looks like this and it protrudes up through that hole in the case right there. And the O-ring I showed you goes right in this location right here of the connector. And you put the O-ring in on that location then you take this and slide it up into the case and see these tabs, there are tabs all the way around the perimeter. These secure the connector up in place in the case. Now then from the top, you have this connector that I just moved over to the side here so you could see it. And this connector goes in vertically and snaps down. Now often when people push that connector down onto this connector, it'll overcome the resistance of these tabs and this connector will drop back into the transmission and then of course it will leak because that O-ring's not in place. The other thing that can happen is these tabs and this connector can wear over time and allow a leak to happen. Also, the little tiny seal that I showed you, this one, that fits inside of the connector that protrudes through the case. And what happens is the O-ring seals from the case to the, this connector and that seal that fits in here seals from the connector to the seal itself. And on the inside of the seal, it seals from the seal to that electrical connector. So in theory, everything is sealed. Well, I think the O-ring is tired in my vehicle. I don't trust that these tabs are full length anymore. They might've been worn down and the connector doesn't seat fully vertical, like fully up into the case. And I also don't trust that seal that uh, is there. So what I'm going to do is change the O-ring and put some RTV sealant in the base of that seal to take care of this. Now, to get this off, it was a bit of a nuisance. I had to take the transmission pan bolts out. I had to bend this bracket that holds the shift cable, bend it to towards the driver's side to get it out of the way and drop the pan down. And then you try not to make a super mess on the floor. I did okay. Get the pan out of the way. Then to get access to this connector, you need to remove a bolt that holds a clip in place that removes a solenoid that would be in this location. And then you have to take the three bolts out that hold the one, two accumulator off. And then you can pull, then you put a 32 millimeter socket on the top of this connector as it protrudes through the, the housing and put the 32 mil socket down and it compresses these tabs and then the connector will come out. So that gives you access to everything. Now. As a bit of extra insurance, I'm actually going to undo this little bit of wire loom here. Two zip ties, I'm going to cut them off and peel those wires apart and clean this really well and RTV the bejeepers out of that in the back. I was going to do it in here, but if I do it in here, I have to shove the pins through the, the RTV and I don't think I really want to do that because then the pins may not make good contact with the electrical connector that they go into. So I've decided I'm going to do it back here. I'll clean the transmission fluid out of it really well with brake cleaner and then blow it clean. And then I'm going to RTV it heavy. So I've put a little rim of RTV on that rubber gasket right around there. Not putting any in the center because if I put some in the center, that'd be hard to get the electrical connector off. And I do not want to do that. It'd be hard to see, but I plowed the RTV to the back of that connector. And now I'm going to insert this for good. So now I've got the green seal inserted into the connector. And here's a better look at the RTV plowed wire harness in the back. And now I'm going to put the wire loom back on here and zip tie it again. Then it'll be ready for installation. Okay, so here's something I want to show you. I've got the connector back up into place, shoved up into the transmission. And those locking tabs are in place, but I'm going to push down on the top of the connector. Watch this. See that? See how it dropped down? And watch, I'll push it back up. See, it pushes up. Well, that amount of clearance is enough 
to make that o-ring start to leak so when i put this back together there is a bracket that i'm going to install on the accumulator that's going to hold that connector in place now there's a special clip it's an aftermarket clip and it's meant to hold that connector in place it looks like this and i'll put a link in the description of how to get it but basically it's the bolt that of the accumulator that's closest to the connector so that bolt hole right there it's the short it's one of the two short bolts okay and it goes through there like this and then you screw it in place like this and when the screw is screwed down it contacts that connector and holds it in place at least that's the theory we're going to see when i tighten this up if that actually is true when this was installed there was still a millimeter or two play and i didn't want any of that i want this to be pushing up to the connector snug so what i did was i put the end of the bracket with the hole in it in the vise and rebent it so that this length between here and here is longer so i basically moved the position of that 90 you can see there right in the center of the frame that's the clip and it's holding up the housing for that connector even if you push on the electrical wiring harness of the vehicle to connect to the transmission that connector won't fall down and it should have come like this from the factory but anyway uh, at this stage i'm going to reach around the top and plug in the electrical connector i'm going to put some dielectric grease on it to just make sure that it doesn't corrode Next, this solenoid valve goes back into place, and you see the black part that's hanging down between my finger and my thumb? It needs to go in at this orientation. Okay, so any of you pros watching, you can have a laugh at my expense, because this EPC solenoid has to go back in place before the 1-2 accumulator, so I had to take that off. In fact, I took the, the bolt that had the bracket that held the plastic connector in place and the other small bolt, took them out, loosened this long one, and then I could just swivel the 1-2 accumulator out of the way put the EP solenoid back in place and put the bracket back in. Now there's a special way the bracket goes in. I'm going to zoom in on it so you can see. I was told by the transmission guy, don't screw that up. What I'm referring to is that little clip right there. So there's a bolt up here that holds the solenoid in place. You put the solenoid in place. And the other thing is the orientation of that solenoid I think is important as well. So I'm going to show you mine, the black, like right there, the connector on it was kind of at the 7, at the 8 p.m. location. Torqued that bolt to 8 foot-pounds and all these three bolts to 8 foot-pounds in the accumulator. And now the filter's ready to go on and then the gasket and then the new and the pan. And just give a look at your wiring harness. Make sure things are all tucked up out of the way. Next, take your, your transmission filter and put it back in place. It might need a little, little twist there and you'll feel it line right up nicely against this right here so that's in place i've got the bottom of the transmission where the pan gasket goes all cleaned off and i have the transmission pan cleaned and the magnets cleaned to get all the metal mud off of them and the new gasket in place and now comes the annoying part while holding the gasket on the pan i'm going to try to get the pan in place and around this bracket right here and this was the tricky part so what I did when I took this out is I took a large pair of locking pliers like that and against that bracket and I'm just trying to get the bracket bent enough that I can get this pan in there and then I'll let it go again and then I'll take one of my pan bolts and get it up in place and then all of your other pan bolts go in and you're going to torque them evenly so that you don't bunch your gasket up. And I torqued up all the pan bolts to nine foot pounds. Now, this job shouldn't have been so scary, but whenever I get into automatic transmissions, it's only once every few years and I'm just nervous about something go wrong. But in this case, it went fine. And if you take your time, pay attention to where the bolts go, keep things clean, you'll be fine. Good luck with your do-it-yourself projects.